Good morning, everyone. I'm here with the amazing psychic Liz Cross. How are you doing this morning? Oh, well, uh, my dopamine is high. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, there's lots going on in the news. It is uh, Sunday, the July 14th. So obviously last night there was a big event that happened. Um, and we're going to do a dopamine probe. So let's <laughs> let's have some fun first. Let's see uh, how, how high is um, Mr. Trump's dopamine right now? All right, so I'm going to tune in to Donald Trump. What happened when you realized you were being shot at? He quickly went into fight or flight mode, okay? Yeah. Um, his body reacted chemically is what I'm getting, and he went into fight or flight mode. Was yeah. that down to dopamine? Was that down to dopamine? No, I'm getting it's not down to dopamine. That's another combination of chemicals that makes you react. Yeah, so I would think the dopamine would come in after the fact. So after ah. the the stress hormones are are down and he has like you know his, you know, he's uh, thinking a little bit more clearly about what happened. That's when the dopamine would kick in. Are you happy to be alive? Oh, exceptionally happy. He's put his hand on his heart when he said that. Uh, what about Melania? Oh, she's happy I'm alive. What about your kids? Oh, they've all rallied around him, his kids. Okay. Are your kids with you? So, yes, yeah, some of them are with him. Um, oh. How are you feeling? He is high off of dopamine right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna see uh, you know how, how that works in the brain a little bit today. So we're gonna view dopamine. Obviously, dopamine, you know, sadly it's it's associated with addictions also. Um, and in our technological age, we are being high, our dopamine our dopamine systems are being hijacked by technology, by social media, by video games, by pornography by all kinds of different things as we're going to see so we're going to we're going to look into all of that and we're going to give you solutions as well i hope i mean i have some solutions so i get to i get to get on the hot seat and see if i know what i'm talking about as usual and we're going to bring in may wen ho to help uh you know put me on the hot seat a little bit and we'll see how much i know <laughs> yeah. and just so, just so you guys are aware we're going to do a part one Part two will be behind the Patreon. If you want uh, access to part two and all the other information, plus Discord, plus CGT, plus Photon, plus Shakespeare, plus Mr. Reality, and on and on and on, please go to patreon.com forward slash remote viewing and beyond. Don't forget, Mr. Photon, he works so hard for us, as do all of the interviewers. Photon does have a tip jar down below usually the first or second comment yeah much appreciated uh if you can send me some shekels and support me through the tip jar and i also do consults as well both crypto and health consults so yeah a lot of the stuff that we're actually going to be talking about today i it's a big part of what i teach um, because i'm a big big believer in electromagnetic and light medicine and we're going to see how it affects the brain, how light affects the brain and dopamine. So let's get into it. I think we should do a little, I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction for people to what dopamine is, how it's made, like what the heck are we talking about here? So I'm going to try and not get, it's going to be a little bit technical, but I'm going to try and, you know, water down a little bit for everybody. Um, so, you know, what does dopamine do, right? It is our, it's one of, part of our feel good hormones um, along with like serotonin. Right. So dopamine is released in response to pleasurable activities such as eating, um, you know, social interactions, um, you know, solving problems. Right. It gives you confidence. Um, and what happens? What's the, the chemical process in the brain? So it, it occurs in different parts of the body, but mainly in the brain. So the number one place, uh, the first place that it's created is actually in the eye, which people don't know. There's a part of the eye that actually is not involved with actually seeing things. Like we have two parts. There's a pathway where you actually have a visual pathway where you see things. 
and there's a non-visual pathway that gives a lot of information and energy in from the environment. And then that goes to your brain. And that part, the non-visual pathway, it actually makes dopamine there. It's called the RPE. I'm not going to give you the full name because you know, I'm going to blow fry people's brains. Um, but that's the that's the part of the brain that made the first part that makes dopamine. And then the next part is called the substantia nigra, which is a part of the brain that is involved with the motor pathway. So moving around. So you can imagine like Parkinson's disease, for instance, there it's well known that they have a lack of dopamine in that part of the brain. And that causes all of the, you know, the, the tremors and the, the physical things that happen when you get Parkinson's. And then of course, the hypothalamus is the, the next part that produces dopamine. And that's involved with temperature regulation, um, your thirst response. So we're going to see how things like, um, you know, extreme temperatures can affect dopamine. Okay, so that's kind of like a, a quick rundown of, of what dopamine is, where it's, where it's um, activated. So what I want to know is some of the things that are less known. They, there are studies to back this stuff up. But I want to know for sure. So we have Mei Wen Ho here where, you know, she's our, our resident health expert. We thank her for being here. So we're she's our, our panel for today as usual. And I want to know about how light affects that part of the, the eye, the RPE, and how it's, it's making the dopamine through light. So well, this is what I understand. She can tell me like a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a yes or no that when you, your eye is exposed to sunlight, there's actually an um, electromagnetic kind of uh, response that's, that's creating the dopamine. So you have these things in your brain called aromatic amino acids, and they're, they're amino acids that actually resonate with light frequencies. Uh, I think you can actually see a picture of the, like to the right there, the molecules, See how it's like a hexagon molecule in mm. the middle that actually in, interacts with a specific frequencies of light and they actually spin. It causes them to spin in a specific direction. And then this is what, what drives the chemistry. So there's an interaction between light frequencies coming in and the actual chemistry of these molecules, right? And this is what creates dopamine in the eye. Can she confirm that? Is that what creates dopamine in the eye? It's part of it. Okay. But right. it's also sending signals to the brain. Correct. So there's all these different pathways that it sends signals to in the brain that then create dopamine in other places. For instance, the, the substantia nigra, it's a part of the brain that it's actually black when you look at it under like a CT scan or something like that. Like it's it's really stands out. And it's actually it has a huge, 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 huge content of melanin. So melanin is what gives you a tan. And dopamine and melanin are actually linked. They're two really good feel, feel good hormones. And that part of the brain also creates a bunch of, of dopamine. And so like even for athletes, dopamine is very important because if you have a lot of, if you're high dopamine, it affects how your muscles uh interact with the with the world like how fast twitch your muscles are and the the different uh response your balance everything so dopamine is also important for your motor skills so uh, it's very important to athletes so it's sending signals to the that part of the brain and then also to the hypothalamus as well uh, for sure so it's involved with a lot of different processes it's not just what we all think that it's you know the, everybody thinks associates dopamine with like the, the reward system, the pleasure system, which exists in the midbrain. So that's why, you know, if you're someone that's addicted to substances, your dopamine uh, receptors are being hit when you're engaging in that activity or when you're engaging in the activity. It could be anything. It could be maybe you're addicted to food also, right? That same reward center is going to be activated. So obviously this is, you know, something that happens like in a healthy way and then in a not so healthy way, right? So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Okay. So I kind of got lost off in the way there. What, what did I want to ask there? So, <laughs> <laughs> so is, is there like a, a quantum effect that happens between light and dopamine? Is there, is there like on the quantum level, is there something that's happening there? 
dopamine. It's a bit more subtle than that. Subtle, okay. Uh, what I also am seeing is that it's also connect. It's also communicating with the mitochondria as well. So the information yeah. that that's happening in the brain there, it's then that information is then transported to the mitochondria, um, taking in that information from light from the eye and the brain. Is that correct? Yes. So it's the mitochondria that have to be involved as well. Right. So this is like a this effect of light and then dopamine and then the communication to the brain and then the mitochondria. That's massive. That's, you know, that's that's a huge effect that we're having from, you know, as we'll see with technology. Right. Because, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, we, you know, there was a point where we just had candle candlelight. Right. We didn't have electric light. And we had fires, we had candlelight, and we had the sun. And that's pretty much, you know, besides, you know, a lightning strike every once in a while, that was all the light that you saw. And now we have technology 24 seven, we have artificial light 24 seven. So what we're going to look at first is some of the, the ways that our we negatively affect our dopamine in the modern world. And then in the second part of this video, we're going to get more into the solutions, of how you can fix this. So let's look at a few ways that we're being affected right now. So I'm going to switch over to here. So this slide that we're showing here is actually wavelengths of light. And it's going from violet all the way up to red on the right side. And on the, <clears throat> the chart here, there's four bars that are outlined in yellow. And these are wavelengths, 420 nanometers to 450 nanometers. So what they've identified here is this specific wavelength, these wavelengths of, of light, they actually destroy parts of your eye, specifically in the RPE that we, we talked about earlier where the dopamine is created. So when you're looking at these light frequencies by themselves, they've actually been shown to kill those cells and destroy the photoreceptors. So the question is, where do those light frequencies, where are we getting those light frequencies from? Well... Wow. They are present in our modern lighting and our screens. So we have new bulbs now. They're LED bulbs. They're compact fluorescent bulbs. So those are the ones with mercury inside them. Um, those are the new lights that we've had in the last 15 to 20 years. And on the frequency spectrum, this is a frequency spectrum of the lights, we can see that they're really high in those levels of the blue and those frequencies that we looked at in that other graph, those are all in the blue range. So blue light from these artificial sources has been shown to destroy the parts of the eye that create dopamine. So that's like the first link in the chain, right? Before it gets into the brain, like we we we, we asked about, and then it creates all the rest of the dopamine. So can we ask Mei Wen Ho, these artificial light sources that we're looking at, as well as screens from your computer as well as screens from your phone are they responsible for a lowering the dopamine and destroying the parts of the you know apparatus that create the dopamine so the constant exposure to light through artificial means just and what was the rest of that question i'm sorry so okay let's ask it in two parts number question number one do these artificial light sources that I that I mentioned, do they lower our dopamine levels in the brain and eye? Yes. And also, it causes a dysregulation of dopamine, okay, is what she's telling me. Not official medical advice, obviously psychic entertainment. But she's saying to me, if you never have a period of no light versus constant light, it just becomes the point where the dopamine isn't produced as effectively. Like the body gets excited when it goes from dark to light, right? It gets excited. Yeah. It's like the waking up and you need that dopamine to wake up, right? Yes. And face the day ahead. If you are constantly exposed to light in some way, shape or form, then that waking up period is not as exciting. It's not 
a vi you know, vibrationally, it's not exuding gratitude. It's sort of like it, it ruins the dopamine production. It's like, oh yeah, okay. And, and it's not as effective. Like the body doesn't react to the dopamine as it would if it was going from dark to light. Right. Yeah. There needs to be that yin and yang, right? The light and the dark, like, and we would, we would you, you'd look at like metaphysically, but also on the physical, the earth plane, you need that contrast because we are uh, diurnal mammals, right? We have a light and we, we exist in the daytime and we go to sleep at night as opposed to nocturnal animals, which are the opposite. So we have our regeneration pathways that, that are supposed to be on when there's darkness, and now we live in a modern world where there is never really darkness anymore, unless you live like in a really rural area, right? And you don't have lights shining in your windows um, from street lights. Um, you know, it's very rare or you're camping, right? That's the only time we really get away from. And even when you're camping, you still got your cell phone now, right? So you really, it's really hard to get away from. Um, so our body, and we got this in another probe as well. You're right. It needs just as much as it needs sunlight. It also needs darkness right it needs that the other side of the coin so that's that's pretty interesting okay so that is something so on a physical level we're destroying the parts of our brain and dysregulating the parts of our brain that produce dopamine and of course this is also linked to circadian rhythms as well so dopamine actually plays a part in kicking off parts of the circadian cycle so the the sleep wake cycle through melatonin that's been studied as well and yeah, the dopamine, it's so it's your it's your right, it's your feel good hormone, it's your motivation. So when you when if that's not there in the morning, then you get, you know, you want to reach for the coffee more, right? You want to reach for those substances, the sugar more to wake you up, right? You're leaning on that as a crutch. So that leads to the addictive substances that will also activate the the dopamine system in an unhealthy way. <laughs> so it's a vicious cycle. If you have the dopamine from a proper sleep wake cycle, you actually feel like you maybe don't need the coffee as much, uh, at least in my experience. Um, and then if you do reach for the coffee, then you can get into that addictive cycle with the caffeine that you you need it now to wake up in the morning. So there's there's that. It's like a, it's a it is like a vicious cycle. Well, okay. and also from from what we've gotten, and this is coming through again in previous probes, which is the body is an energy conservation machine. Wherever yeah. it can, it will conserve energy, right? If uh, you are having issues with the body producing dopamine because you are operating at a low vibrational state, so talking about anxiety, depression, then you need the stimulant to, to have the dopamine temporarily dopamine production, right? It's temporary. Um, then what happens is the body then says, well, you know what, you can take care of that. So you now become reliant upon whatever it is to produce the dopamine. And, and that's short lived, right? Because there's the come down period. You know, we all hear about the come down period. The come down period is not nice. I once had a boss that was on drugs, right? And when she was coming down, you stayed the hell out of her way because she was coming for you. The come down period is so severe that, you know, if you were in her firing line, God help you. And uh, so, but the body then says, you know what? We're not making dopamine anymore. So where, where are you using substances to feel somewhat happy or a little bit of dopamine, right? The body then says, I'm, it gets into like a, a refusal mode. I'm not going to create it anymore because it takes a lot of energy, according to the body, to create dopamine. I'm an energy conservation machine. Therefore, I'm not going to do it. I can find other ways to uh, expend energy, other things to expend energy on other than producing dopamine. So, so that's another thing with regards to addiction that the body, and then it loses the memory of how to even produce it. If right. you go on too long and you sort of damage those centers because use it or lose it, right? 
I'm getting that very strongly. You will lose that capability of, of producing dopamine. Now right. we're talking I mean, about people that have been in addiction cycles for lots and lots of years. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, if you keep smashing those dopamine receptors, like with artificial means, they kind of get burnt out after a while. So I have some, hopefully some tricks and tips in the other part of this video that we're going to hopefully be able to reset those receptors to some degree for people that are just, you know, maybe not even super addicted to something like you're, you were saying, but you know, just everyday people that are constantly just smashing those dopamine receptors on artificial devices, your screen, you know, social media, all this stuff. But let's talk about some of that right now. So I have a Google patent here about the nervous system being manipulated by electromagnetic fields from the monitors that we're using from your, from your computer screens, from your TVs, from your, your, uh, your phone. So let's, let's ask Mei Wen Ho, First of all, is this possible? Can can our nervous system be manipulated um, by our our computer screens and phones just by the the electricity that's coming off of the actual electromagnetic fields? Can our nervous system be manipulated just by the electromagnetic fields? Yes, and it is being manipulated. Okay, so th this is I thought there was a patent that was directly from Google. Like they have, they hold the patents literally, but I couldn't find it for this video. But I found this one from a private individual that's on Google Patents. So I want to let's pull in Google first. Let's probe Google. Okay. So, Are, mm -hmm. do they hold patents to manipulate people's nervous systems through screens? To manipulate people's nervous systems through screens no okay i think Are... they applied did you apply they have applied but i don't they can't okay so this might be the, the patent because i don't think it's in uh it's not being used this patent like officially so are they using technology to addict people knowingly to their products Using technology to addict people knowingly to yes, of course that's but right. that's across the board, right? That is, that is that's the board. any technology company. You probe Twitter, you probe Facebook, you probe. Well, that's Google. who I want to probe next. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> this is the first one. Yeah, I want to bring I want to bring Facebook in after these guys. So I just wanted to know if they're using. If they if they're using technology in the phones that we that we're all using to control basically to control people's nervous system, which is their you know it's like brainwashing. This sounds like a conspiracy theory, but I mean, there's a patent here showing that the the electromagnetic fields coming off of screens you can control someone's nervous system. So are the so they're actively doing that? Look, addicts make great customers. Right. Okay. Absolutely. They do. They're the best customers. Yep. They'll spend their every last dime on whatever it is that they need to, to get their fix. Okay. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's technology, whether it's gaming, you get to a certain point in the game. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now I need to spend X amount to go further. Right. They know exactly what they're doing. Addicts yeah. make the best customers. Chemically laden food. It's chemically engineered to make you an addict. Why? So you'll buy more. You'll want more. You'll crave more. Sugar. Companies know when they put sugar in food, added sugars. Why? Because sugar is very addictive. They want you to crave more. You want more, right? They Addicts make the best customers. Do you ever hear a crackhead say, Oh, I'm not going to smoke today because I don't have any money. No, they always find a way by hook or by crook. Because right. the companies know that the individual cannot, is not more powerful than their brain wiring. So the brain starts to wire for the addiction 
fighting your brain wiring is damn near impossible. Does that mean that you shouldn't try? Absolutely not, right? Because addicts like to find justifications for their addictions too. And you can't just say, well, I can't fight my brain wiring, so I'm not going to even bother trying. No, Liz is not saying that. But this is what you're up against. So if you think about step one in any sort of addiction recovery program is you have to admit you are powerless over your addiction. What you're actually admitting is your brain wiring is more powerful than you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, willpower only goes so far. Okay, so what I'm what I really want to get at though with Google, obviously Google controls information, right? Everything for most people that you know are oblivious to this, they just use Google. I personally don't use Google um, because I know all this stuff. Um, so, but I know that they control the, the the flow of information really on the internet, and I've been following this for a long time. They've they basically have a chokehold on information. So that so if you search for information, you know, ten years ago. And you put in the same search information now, you get much less search results. Even though there's much more information on the internet, Google is actually throttling the amount of information and sources of information that you get today. It's it's moving slowly and slowly and slowly towards a place where they control what you see um, by using their search engine. Everybody uses their search engine, obviously. So they're quite involved in you know being the gatekeepers of information in the entire world now. So the fact that they are controlling people's nervous systems through electromagnetic fields and they control the physical flow of information. I mean, you, you said it that, that, uh, you know, makes good customers to be addicted to their product, but there's always going to be that monetary gain for sure, which is obvious, but are they doing this to, you know, influence and brainwash people and spread the kind of propaganda uh, through controlling people's brains. Like, I know this sounds like super <laughs> conspiracy theory, but like, that's literally where my mind goes when I see that they have this technology. So is there a, like a level of intent above the, you know, more getting more customers? Is there a level above? And I'm asking Google specifically. Yeah. By the way, on YouTube. Who, by the way, could take me down and ban my Oh, that's, IP. well, that's true. Um, that's true. All right. Well, okay, hey, let's ask Meta. Okay. <laughs> Meta doesn't pay the bills. Uh, <laughs> you're so funny. Um, do you, okay, so let's ask Meta. Um, and the question again would be. Okay, so they are obviously using, they're hijacking people's dopamine systems through their addictiveness and social media, right? Are they using this just for monetary gain or are they trying to control the masses through the, te the, the physical technology, like controlling our nervous systems and brains um, through electromagnetic fields and screens to gain power and control and, and spread propaganda? Well, remember that probe that we did a long time ago where they did... Uh controlled experiments on people where they hooked up their brain uh, to receptors or to some sort of, you know, measuring centers where they measured what excited them the most so they could push the most exciting content. And it was anger and fear that kept people engaged the most in their platform. Remember that? I don't know if right. you remember that. That was a while mm -hmm. ago. So let's ask. Are you using Meta to push a certain narrative? They can if they want to. They very well know that they have that uh, power behind them. Um, but do you still do that? I mean, they're trying to, to go away from that because what happens is they're telling me it's bad for business. Why is it bad for business? Well, because people are aware of what we're trying to do and then they take their business elsewhere. So the main thing that they want to do is to keep people engaged on their platform. And right. that's exactly right, right? I understand that because YouTube operates in the same way. If we do a video that says, oh, by the way, go check out the rest of this video on another platform, right? We get a strike from YouTube because YouTube does not want anybody 
moving away from YouTube, going in and being engaged on another platform to view something. They want people on their on their platforms because the more that people are on their platforms, the more they can charge advertisers that are paying to push their content or to push their products on these platforms. If people are not staying on the platforms, they can't charge the advertisers. Okay. Let's ask, can we just like group like ever like I don't know, like the the tech industry then. So we're not like specifically, okay. you know, asking a specific company. But I want to know since we have this patent for the electromagnetic fields, you know, affecting the nervous system, can they can like how far can it go? How far can they control people with the electromagnetic fields? Like, is this just the level of, oh, we're just like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna increase the dopamine levels, or are they like, can they implant thoughts in people's minds? You know, there's like a range of what they can do. Is there is it that extreme? Can you how far does it go? Thoughts into people's minds. Well, they can control your thoughts. Okay. What I'm getting very strongly, how do you control our thoughts? By pushing certain agendas, right? As a tech industry of, as a whole. Okay. They can okay. control your thoughts in that way. They're influencing. The more you're exposed to something, the more you are, you know, sort of receptive and willing to absorb the information okay um so can you control us with electromagnetic fields yes they can they can crank up the frequency wow okay so and that is that through like for instance we have obviously phones and they have bluetooth and they have like cellular antennas is it done through those antennas is it done through the cellular antennas no, is it's it done, done through... through the actual program. Okay, so what, but for instance, we're looking at a patent here where it's showing that there's fields coming off of a monitor, like actual fields. Is that the screen itself producing light frequencies? Are light frequencies able to do that? Yes, they can do it through light frequencies. Okay, all right. So the screens that you have, so your your television, your computer screen, and your phone screen, those would be the main um, carriers of this information. So and they can tweak it to where the light frequency going back to where you started. They can tweak it where the light frequency produces dopamine. So you want to look at the screen more, right? right. That's how yes. they're doing it. Right. So you literally have uh, a drug dealer in your hand all the time. And this brings me to the most, I mean, we're all adults here and we can make our own decisions and we have our own responsibility, but you know, who doesn't children. Right. And I see it all the time, uh, really younger and younger children having these devices in their hands. And, you know, I, I know that the information isn't there. Like there's obvious, like, you know, people that would obviously be like, that's probably not good, right? But when you actually get into the science behind this, like we're digging into now, now it's really looking like you're giving your child like a drug, like a physical drug, like you're, it's the same as like cocaine in a way, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that's- You, won't, you yeah. won't see that in my kids' hands, right? Yeah. I'm I'm the bad mommy. Okay, I'm the mom that says, no, you're not having a smartphone, you're not having a tablet, you're not having an iPad, you're not having a gaming console, you're not having a computer in your bedroom, you're not having access to social media, if you want to use the computer to do your homework, it's right there on the living room table for in full view of everybody. Okay, I'm bad mommy. Guess what? Now, my oldest son is thankful. Thankful. It's a little isolating because all of his friends are addicted to devices, okay? It's very difficult to actually have a conversation with people his own age that are addicted. They go out, they all stare at their phones. My kid's not. Why? Because he doesn't have a smartphone, right? He's not an addict. And he can also do very intricate uh, work which he does, um, he has, he's owned his own business since he was 
uh, 14 years of age. How, how is that, Liz? Well, because he's not sitting on a smartphone, right? And he does very intricate work with his hands. Uh, that, and this, this thing is dying out because people cannot hold the concentration levels long enough to do this type of work. And he gets paid very well right? He doesn't have to go flip burgers for $10 an hour. He's making $100, $150 an hour. Why? Because he was never allowed to access that technology. Yeah. And also, but there's also a monkey see monkey do effect as well. So, you know, you're going to have an even harder time, I would imagine as a parent, if you are addicted to the technology and then, you know, whether you say what goes or not in your household, Mm -hmm. They're they're looking at you doing that, that having that addiction. So they they you know they're going to see that as well. So it's it's almost like you know, you have to you have to take care of yourself first, so you can put the oxygen mask on your your uh, your children. Yeah, but most um, people are in denial. So yes. let's ask, let's ask <laughs> dopamine. Let's let's grab the entity of dopamine and say, why is denial such a strong component? So that goes along the brain wiring, okay? That denial is where the consciousness has actually been hijacked by the addiction and they're in denial because to admit it means that you have to try to make a change, right? You can no longer just blindly give in to this brain wiring and addiction, which is what we'll get into more on part two. Yeah, for sure. About, but- you know, that that denial prospect is really, really difficult. So, you know, trying to tell parents and, and the other thing is, well, everybody else's kid is doing it. I don't want to be seen as the bad parent. I don't care. Right. I don't care. Do you think I care? Like, OK. All right. Uh, My kid's not addicted to pornography at, you know, in his teenage years. Why? Because he wasn't allowed to have access. Right? right. But everybody's watching it. And and that's the thing with a, about porn addictions. The problem with porn addictions is because society, particularly with men and boys, thinks and they have been conditioned that, oh, well, it's just normal. All men look at porn. Do they? Do they really? And and OK. Are they, is it compulsive? Do they have to look at it for several hours a day to the point where it's ruining all their relationships? They can't even connect with people. They lock themselves in rooms and bedrooms. Uh, They're watching it every uh, chance that they get, right? Is that normal behavior? No, that's an addiction. So don't listen to these societal things where, oh, well, everybody watches porn, don't they? Uh, No. No, not to that extent. Addicts watch porn. And do you know how many people are are emailing me? Liz, help. My son is 17. He's 16. He's 15. He's 10. He's 11. He's 12. He's addicted to pornography. Can you CTT it out of him? Do you know how many people I have in my queue for CTT? Over 2,000. So, I mean, no. This, so why not just be preventative and not give it to them in the first place? Pull the plug. Pull the plug. Yeah, we're going to look at some, hopefully, some solutions to rewire the brain and then also to reset the dopamine receptors, hopefully, um, on the physical level and then obviously with what you do as well. Um, so we're going to head over to a part two now, but I just want to, the next questions that I'm going to ask, I definitely want to ask about the spiritual component to this, how the darkness is using these tools to affect um, you know, to for its own aims, because I'm sure that that's what's going on through technology, oh, it's not just the companies trying to make money. And then I also want to ask about like upcoming stuff like, you know, VR glasses and like how artificial intelligence is going to hijack the dopamine system. So and then we'll get into solutions. So we got a lot more to cover. Uh, if you want to see the second part of this video, you got to become a member on our Patreon and then you'll get access to our Discord as well, which is kind of cool because we have a, we have all kinds of cool people on there having conversations. We're sharing stuff. I'm sharing stuff. I have all of my health stuff in a playlist on there. The stuff that you see on YouTube, the stuff you don't see on YouTube, it's all in one place. So you can watch them. And then we have all the videos from every other presenter that's there as well. Not just myself, Mr. Shakespeare, Mr. Reality. 
Um, so you get a lot of content. You're not seeing half the videos uh, on YouTube. So it's well worth it. It's not a lot of money. Um, but, you know, we uh, we do have to keep the lights on for all of us. So um, that's do. why we have that's why we have a paywall uh, for some of our content. So if you'd yeah. like to support us and you want to keep seeing these amazing videos, then become a member with us uh, on Patreon. So how do they do that, Liz? Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash remote viewing and beyond. We hope to see you there. Trust me, it's money well spent. It really is. For the stuff that we put out, most people are charging like two, three, four, five hundred dollars for a month. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll see you there on the flip side. Excellent. Thank you.